Bonsoir, sugar babies. How's it going? Happy Tuesday. Um, yeah, I'd just like to start off by saying that my hair is not greasy. It is damp. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, the zits are real, all natural. Um, yeah, just raw and natural today. I wasn't feeling very good, um, which is brings me to the story I'm going to tell for today. Um, I was I was just gonna do like a play by play on a spontaneous manifestation that happened, and also do an oracle um, reading with the mermaids and dolphins about career and goals and our manifestation. So yeah, so what happened was I was all manic and Aries and you know picking up every shift I could for this week and just wanting to like work extra and make extra money. And last night was my first shift of like this, this fresh week and I'm all like gung ho and I'm supposed to go back in today. And the moment I went to bed last night, I was stricken with like some kind of like stomach issue. I don't know whether it was like a bug or it was something I ate, but it really hit like <laughs> strong, hard and fast and all that implies. And so I was just like up all night. I didn't feel good. And I woke up and I was tired and I still didn't feel good. It was like lingering. And I was like, I really want to go into work and make money tonight, but I don't want to go in if I'm sick. And, I, and I'm really pretty tired. And I also don't want to go through a dinner, dinner rush like with like diarrhea, essentially. Like how awful is that? Like trying to like run to the bathroom, getting like double sat, like trying to get my belt off, like trying not to let my phone fall in the toilet. So I'm just like, yeah, probably not a good idea. So I decide to give myself a couple of hours, like wake up and like drink some like coffee and see if I feel better, which coffee does sound counterintuitive for stomach issues, but it actually made me feel better. Maybe it was the oat milk and the local honey. I don't know, but I did start to feel better and I, I just hadn't like released my shift yet and I just couldn't decide whether I should sh release the shift or not. And so I was like, well, I'm the creator of my reality, so I should just be healed. <laughs> and I did start feeling better, but I wasn't like, I wasn't 100%. And so around midday, like I, I was like feeling it out. And I was like, yeah, I think it's kind of past the point of like releasing the shift. And I think I can rally. And I think I'll feel better. Like once I move around a little bit more and like I get ready for work. And I was like, and you know what? I'm just certain that it's possible it would be super awesome if they just like maybe sent me a text and let me know I was cut and I didn't have to worry about it at all. You know, I'd already passed the window of opportunity to release the shift and get it picked up. And, and what's interesting is that the other day, I think part of our message was, was that like not to be overly worried about like doing something or not doing it um or like oh the timing of it like being too late because i was like you might be too late but the universe might swoop in with some grace to fill the gaps anyway so i was thinking you know oh it, it would be super cool if they just like texted me and told me i was cut and that way i wouldn't have to worry about it either way and i was like you know what i'm absolutely certain i'm certain that the universe has my back i'm certain that if i need to go in and make the money that i'll feel better or i'll feel good enough to get through the shift or it'll be horrible and i will become a stronger person for having survived it and earn some good points coming my way or like i'll feel fine and everything will be great or like they'll cut me uh, either way i release i have no like dog in this fight i know that whatever will happen will happen and i kind of like was like clear it's like I wasn't really like deeply wanting either or. It's just that I was very clear about what I wanted. I was like, I do want to go into work, but I don't want to work sick and I don't want to get anybody else sick and I do need the rest. Um, I also don't want to be high maintenance and be like, oh, asking to like, you know, get cut from the floor last minute. And so I was like, okay, you know, it's just classic, typical Libra rising situation. Like I can see all the pros and cons. So I was like frozen and I just let it go. I was like, okay, I'm clear about how I feel. But I just let this go. I'm going to let the universe handle it because the universe has my back. And so I did some, um, some subconscious uh, hypnoth hyp hyp hypnotherapy essentially with the 2B magnetic work. They're called DIs, deep imaginings. 
So I did a couple of those to try to like, um, like heal my inner child stuff and all that, that kind of thing. And while I was like in the DI, I had my phone notifications off. And when I woke up from one, it was my manager and they were like, your cut tonight. And I was like, yes, the manifestation has come to pass. But it's so funny because like every, every night or every afternoon when I'm going into work, like I just get myself kind of in this like neutral between neutral and primed, uh, like manic primed. And I'm just like, I set the intention and I'm like, okay, this is the section I want. This is the side work I want. Like I want, like, I know I can get this many seatings and like this many numbers of people in my seats and probably get, you know, and so I set that kind of intention and the pace for the night and the mood and, and everything in it, it always plays out. It's insane. And you know, there might be slight variances here, here and there, but like for the most part, it plays out because I'm just like, I'm really clear about what I want. I don't think that it's like out of the picture that it happens. And I've really come to understand that I'm like really deserving and that I can handle whatever they throw my way. Like I, I can keep up. So, um, so it's, it's all been flowing like so much easier because there hasn't been a lot of resistance. I've been unblocking the subconscious stuff that would normally be throwing a wrench. And I've also been passing tests. Like for instance, um, my big goal this year is to grow this YouTube channel. Um, it's to, you know, simplify my money making. And I've already done that. I've already found that bridge job that I'm really happy and set and satisfied with right now. And so mostly it's about growing this YouTube channel and growing, you know, all the things that I create and, and share with like mysticism and spirituality and, and all of the above. And so, uh, that has meant stepping away from production work. Um, unless it's just something that's like super awesome, you know, it's not going to take a lot of time. It's like top dollar, really easy, like does not drain me at all. So I'm being very particular on a case by case basis about what I'm going to do. And my phone has been ringing off the hook this, this past couple of weeks. I've been turning people down right and left. I turned down an, an opportunity to coordinate a show with like a huge like country music star, like at their honky tonk. And I, I like most people would be like, why, why did you pass on that? And I'm like, because it sounds like a nightmare. I'm going to be having to like coordinate and plan every coming and going from like Broadway the place is like flooded with throw up, you know, I'm just like, it's not, it's, I've, I've seen behind the curtain and I'm good. Thank you. I, I've got a great situation now where I just go in for a few hours and I'm like, Hey, do you want a steak? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, cool. Somebody will bring it. <laughs> like not, not hating the situation that I'm in now. So, so yeah, I've been like trying to, to not go by my, um, that subconscious patterning that says, Ooh, I have to take that glamorous opportunity. Oh, I have to show that I'm so ambitious and I'll do anything, you know, to, to make it happen and whatever. And it's like, no, I don't want that. That's not what I want. I just want to be creative and chill and be happy and enjoy my life and like share what I learn and, 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 and make the most of that. And there are people out there that are doing it. And so I think I can do it too. And so the, 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 the challenge is to take aligned action, action that is in alignment with your like heart, soul, mind, strength, spirit, what's in alignment with what you really want, your values. And so that has meant being like, no, I do not want these jobs. And like, even like my best client that I always said was like my top paying client that like is the easiest one and I get to travel and go to nice dinners. They called me to go to Vegas. And I was like, you know what? It's not really worth the, the, uprooting myself, um, replacing a bunch of stuff in the kit that I need. It's not going to really shake out to be more than it would be if I just stayed here and like picked up an extra shift. So I just did that. I picked up an extra shift and like, I told like the client like that I couldn't make it happen this time. And they were like, are you sure? Like, then they came back at me with like more specifics and like, um, you know, a better offer. And it was like, are you sure you can't make it work? And I'm like, no, I just I'm gonna have to pass. So so passing tests, I'm like trying to like dodge all this like tempting offers everywhere. I'm like, no, I'm sticking to the plan. I'm devoted. I'm committed, I'm committed to myself, committed to the dream, sticking to it. 
Um, so yeah, so all of those things, like acting in alignment um, and passing these tests and, and opening up the possibility that what you want is possible and focus on that and take action and take follow-up steps that show the universe that you're serious, that you're gonna stay on track that you're gonna do what's in alignment with your with your intentions and your values, and you're not gonna settle for the old stuff that wasn't fulfilling, that was you know draining, or you're not gonna settle for like that toxic pattern that you used to do, right? So, so that's what we're doing, and yeah, I think it's really working out. And so you just basically have to surrender, like radically surrender and accept. And I think the key ingredient here is not only like the unblocking the subconscious pattern and patterns and like the really like really believing through and through my own deservingness but also i think it's just being absolutely certain like without a shadow of a doubt that no matter what come come what may what however the situation turns out the universe has my back god is like manifesting through the universe and it's this beingness is moving parts and pieces to align me with this sense of purpose, um, to send me in the direction that's going to keep, you know, taking me on that path for, keep propelling me forward on that path. And I just, I trust it. And I trust that if I have to go in with diarrhea, I go into the restaurant with diarrhea. And if I'm meant to stay home, they'll call me and cut me. And they did, you know? So you just have to really let go release, release it to the care of the universe. Trust 100% that regardless of whether your um, conscious mind likes the outcome right now, it's going to, it's going to play out in your favor and it's all going to work out for you. Because if really this world is just like an illusion and it all is just a video game to stretch us, to see like, you know, to, ha to, to teach us to evolve and transcend our, our weaknesses and our fears, then like, if you think of it that way, you're like, it kind of makes it clear, like what you're being asked to do, which is usually like face your fear, overcome your insecurities and <laughs> face the worst and just take a hit and, and, and bounce back. Um, you heard it here, folks. Uh, if you heard it here first, folks. Just take the hit and bounce back. Life advice, self-help. All right, so let's pull some cards because um, I'm insane now. <laughs> I'm like sleep deprived. So let's pull some cards on advice for us to like take advantage of opportunity, um, realize our potential and overcome our shortcomings. Oh, whoa, that was very, oh, self-forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Uh, let go of old guilt and remember that you're God's perfect child. So interesting. This card came up because I was just, I, I take Kabbalah classes through the Kabbalah center. I'd highly recommend joining. Uh, the Kabbalah center is great, but you can, they, they're always running classes like Kabbalah one, Kabbalah two, Kabbalah three, Kabbalah four. I'm, I'm usually in a couple different ones going on, but my teacher David was literally just talking about, he was like, okay, what do you want to manifest in your life? Like, what do you want to bring you fulfillment? Like, what area in your life do you wish you had more fulfillment in? Um, love, money, relationship, commitment, like adventure, confidence. Like, what is it that you want more of? And he was like, okay, now think about something that you have shame or guilt about. And what guilt are you carrying around? Like, what, what are you not forgiving yourself for? And he was like, that is the block to the other thing. So he was like, the answer to question number two is the answer to question number one. So whatever you're carrying a guilt or shame around, that's the thing that you have to heal and forgive and like forgive yourself for and let go of the guilt. Because another thing that we learn in Kabbalah is that the energy of the devil, the Satan or whatever, the opponent that's always like pushing you so that you can be the hero of your story and overcome, that will always show up at the level that you're playing at. So when you up level, your opponent up levels, right? But that will always show up. Um, oh yeah, at the level that you're playing on. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <clears throat> but the thing is, 
if you get tricked and you fall for uh, the, the opponent's trick, and so the, the masculine opponent, the, the, the male Satan, will, um, will trip you up with the ego stuff like um, e ego trip, grandiosity, temptation, um, all the things that remind you of like opulence and like hedonism and like Las Vegas and like Miami, you know, like all of like the, you know, like drugs and sex and rock and roll and money and fuck you, you know, um, the, the, the female Satan will get you with like self-loathing and depression and like smallness and like, oh, victim, I'm a victim, you know, like, oh, like not good. I don't deserve, I don't, I'm not good enough. So that's how you can that's how you can spot that but the thing is the devil get, will get you once with the tricks but then the devil gets you two times if you feel bad about it because then you're sucked in with the she devil who's like making you feel like shit about yourself so if you fuck up then remember what we learned yesterday from Maggie Gyllenhaal fuck it who cares like just whatever say lovey um and move on and forgive yourself and repent like don't continue to do this like bad um bad patterning bad behavior or whatever like see the error of your ways and try to rise above it and transcend but don't like sit around and carrying around a bunch of like baggage and guilt over it just like do what you need to do make amends and move on forgiveness okay and it's it's self forgiveness specifically all right, what else do we need to know that's going to help us overcome our self I feel like that one really wants to come out. Contemplation time. Spend time alone meditating upon what you truly desire. Um, yeah, get clarity on that. And then ruminate in the excitement of it already being manifested. Because basically the thing is, is that what's truly yours is already in this like spiritual bank account for you. It is already yours. You just have to be in the having of it. Um, it's just like, maybe you're just not, it's just not in your direct experience yet. So contemplate the essence of it, what it is that you're calling in and just notice all the ways that you feel fulfilled and happy now and double down on that. Do all the things that you love and make you feel um, more alive and full of yourself and that expand your consciousness, you know, do that um, self care and that self um, investment and that, that work on yourself because it's something that you'll never lose. It's going to be always be with you and always paying off. So yeah, um, enjoy time by yourself. Um, and if you don't enjoy time by yourself, it's good for you to learn to make peace with being alone with yourself. And eventually you will actually learn to like, really like it. Like I love being by myself. Um, maybe a little too much sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I just, I guess I need a lot of time alone to like do all the things that I like to do. Um, yeah. So forgive yourself and be clear and unapologetic about what you really desire and get clear on that. Um, like I'm being unapologetic about wanting to like grow this YouTube channel and like do it for real and do all the stuff that I'm doing for real and um, pursuing things outside of film. And so I had to like follow up by being like, no, I'm not available even to like some of my favorite best clients um, who I will genuinely miss, like not getting to go to Vegas with the team. Um, okay. And music for manifesting. I love this because I love music. I love, um, the, the imagery and like, I don't know. I, I, I just love music because you can, you can dance to it. You can like, it helps you like visualize. There's just, a, it's poetry essentially. Um, it's art and it's awesome. And it's part of our lives. It's part of like the soundtrack of our life. Um, that's one thing I'm looking forward to if we're ever like at a point in our human species where we're like really tele telepathic, I'm going to be always like having soundtracks come on during certain moments of life. But yeah, music for manifesting. So to manifest rapidly, think of your desire while you chant, hum, sing, or play music. And I like personally, I'm really, lo I love hip hop. Hip hop is like, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of negative hip hop music, but for the most part, it's all about like, I'm so great. I'm like getting rich, like fuck you people. You know, it's not like, 
it's not all sad and depressed about itself. It just, it's kind of a, it's kind of like, kind of gets you pumped. I like, I like rap and I like disco for that. <laughs> Cause disco is fabulous too. Everybody's like got like 10 foot long hair and they're like, oh, you know, like walking in and like on a horse, like wearing nothing and like being fabulous, like all the time. It's just like, it's, it's, it's the good stuff. So yeah, forgive yourself, contemplate what you want and maybe twerk. Twerk to hip hop, that's what I was gonna say because twerking really like jostles that root chakra. I really feel like it kind of like activates the area, it gets that Shakti flowing. Um, I don't know if guys can get their Shakti flowing, but you can get your Kundalini flowing either way. Get that Kundalini raging. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to sign off before I get too, more, too much more perverse. Um, yeah, I think tonight I'm going to look for a fun movie um, to watch and maybe do a bootleg theater. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, sometimes when I'm like going back and watching old movies that I love, I like to um, bootleg clips of the, the and post it in my stories with hieroglyphic commentary that I use from the gifts. So it's sort of like mystery science theater in a way but it's just like the the highlights um in a cheap shitty way <laughs> and i and i broadcast it in my secret story movie theater bootleg movies all right ciao